You're watching Suck Professor. Hello, everybody. It's me, Hank. I'm joined by... James. James! Welcome to our quick review of this week's Westworld episode. Season 2, episode 6, called... Phase Space. Phase Space. Kind of a hard word to say. A hard phrase to say, I would I would argue. Uh, welcome to our show, everybody. It's kind of a preview of our long shop-by-shop -shop breakdown, which we're going to... Uh, there'll be a link in the description for that when it's up. But uh, we're going to talk about our reactions to this episode. There will be spoilers. We have a few screenshots picked out of the kind of key moments. Uh, a little bit random, but mostly we hope you get a flavor of it and our initial impressions after watching this, season, or this episode. James, what would you think? Uh, I thought it was a lot better of an episode than last week. Last week felt like fluff. It felt like filler. It didn't really do much for me. So this episode had some major revelations. There's a bit of stuff in here that didn't seem like it was really connecting to anything meaningful. But by the very end, we got a really big home run, I think. Oh, all right. Good. James loves a ninth inning home run, right? Yep. Well, it started off with a with a, a home run that it ended with a grand slam. Oh, okay. The home right. run in the beginning is what we're about to talk about in this screenshot right here. All right. So the first one here is... Uh... An interview, very familiar setting, but Bernard and Dolores talking. It seems like Bernard is always the interviewer, but then all of a sudden Dolores flips it, flips the script. The weirdest part about this is that when we first started seeing snippets of this particular interview going on throughout the beginnings of the season, people were saying in the comments as though it were fact that this is not simply what it looks like. This is Dolores taking the control point, talking to Bernard as an interviewee. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, how the heck did they know that? It's a good. It's a, How it's a, did they know? It, they were totally right, and I was saying the whole time, "No, this is clearly Arnold back in the day." It's not even Arnold back in the day. This is Bernard. Yeah. How did they know it? This is. Robo was there some like secret sh video or something that we missed that kind of made it obvious, or are they just that smart? They're that smart, and it's just a probability thing. It seemed like it was possible, and enough people believed it was possible and suggested it might be a thing. It's not that complicated. They were so right, though. But it was an interesting switch, where, she, where Bernard tells him to freeze all motor functions, and he immediately does. He freezes his motor no, functions. No, Dolores says to freeze all motor functions. Oh, I, I mean, I got it wrong. I'm referring to the screenshot. But yeah, she... she um, so what... Yeah, I know. I don't know what else to say about this, this screen. So well, I mean, there's a big thing here, because what she says at the very end is says, what are you testing for, Bernard says, and she says fidelity. Right. And we know that fidelity was something they tested for not specifically with hosts that we can gather from what we've seen in the show so far, but with the human mind integrated hosts, yeah. as in with James Delos, which brings into question as to whether in this whole two week time span that's been going on, did they find the mind of Arnold as a control unit? Are they trying to revive him? Or has Bernard always been a mind control, a control unit of Arnold that's going through a constant Turing test that only makes it to say 35, 40 days before they refresh him? Uh, Who knows? I, I don't, and I don't know when when this takes place. When is this? That's is I'm it, not, it has to be somewhere in that two week time span when they kind of gather control. Yeah. But it seems odd though that they would have this kind of complacency to kind of to go from full out rebellion to protecting themselves from invaders to doing nuanced testing on Bernard. It seems a, it seems like it's out of well, place. It's weird. It may it may not be the same fidelity search that the they were using before. It might just be her saying like saying it because she'd been the subject of that before. Like if yeah. I ever took like a got to clean my dentist teeth, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and make my own wild prediction and well, say let's do it. this is happening way in the future. Okay, I like it. I, I don't I, I don't think they even have time for something yeah. like this yet. N not in that two week time span and not in the present. I think this is after the dust is settled. This is Dolores is the god of planet Earth. She's trying to bring is, Arnold back, which is destroyed. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's all. Yeah. So all right, and it, and it kind of poses the question: how much of how much of Arnold is inside Bernard? We don't know. Well, who knows? Yeah. 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 And are they? Do they even kiss when they're done? Um, all right, so Peter uh, Abernathy, we get to, uh, a sight of him. He's been captured. I don't remember him getting caught. Did, what is that? Just because I'm dumb? No, he absolutely got caught. Well, no, I'm not suggesting he didn't get caught. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember it. I just remember, don't remember. Remember, Dolores happened. got shot twice when she was chasing Hale, who they they grabbed him from the bed from Fort uh, Forlorn Hope, and they took him off in a little doom oh, buggy. Yeah, and she was chasing the, and shooting, the, and she takes the two bullets. Yeah, no, yeah, totally remember it now. It's there. Okay, thank you. But anyway, so Charlotte Hale has possession of him finally. She's on a mission to get him back to the corporate. That's the big deal with because his, he has think big... he has all the data, right? But they are like, we can't let him go anywhere, so they just uh, stigmata him to a 
chair? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> this, this we, is a strange yeah. thing. I thought. But we know that Bernard had some interactions with him where he was looking at the file that was encrypted inside of his head that was put there by, was it Lee Sizemore and Hale? I believe uh -huh. it was. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Correct me if I am. But it looks like he was either tinkering with it, cutting it, or copying it into himself. So I'm going to predict that they finally have Peter Abernathy. They have what they think they want, but they're going to look inside and be like, oops, that file is corrupted or that file is missing. Perfect. All right. So next one, um, the uh, Maeve and her gang, which was the subject of the previous episode, they had a big fight. We didn't. So this is sort of the aftermath of her fight in Shogun World. And um, she, uh, they are able to get this guy here, who is the guy who originally captured her, but he's been capture, captured by the Shogun's people or whatever. But they have a fight. We have a nice, good samurai battle here. Musashi and Tanaka. Musashi and Tanaka, thank you. Uh, and this is to earn Maeve's freedom or something. I, I don't know. Something well, like no, this, if, this if is Tanaka to earn wins, Akane's gets the, freedom. Oh, Akane. All right, yeah, well, somehow there's a... Musashi doesn't want to let him leave, and then but Tanaka or this guy's fighting for them to leave. But well, Tanaka wins. Right. right. The, the whole point of the scene wasn't really the fight; it was the symbology of Maeve and Dolores being polar opposites. Dolores taking away the freedom to choose, the freedom to choose up until the the, the threshold of death from Teddy. And yet Maeve, being the witch in this aspect, mm -hmm. refuses to intervene in the fight, saying that I must allow free choice and fate to decide what happens here, even at the risk of death. Okay. So it's kind of a, a parallel between the two, but contrasting one another. They have competing styles. Kind of like you and me. Mm -hmm. I am. I believe in free will, and James um, thinks Will should be imprisoned. <laughs> I hate Will. It was horrible. I was that really dumb. But anyway, it, this is what happens. The guy gets his arm cut off, and he screams, and he goes, Oh, you know, my wrist or forearm my ulna uh that was dramatic but now this is a thing where we uh akane does a sakura rem we remember Maeve relates to her, akane's relationship with sakura it reminds her of her and her the daughter, mother daughter thing yeah the the kind of that's what her driving force is um and but akane decides it was sort of assumed that they're all going to come with Maeve. but then akane and tanaka is it T tanaka or T musashi M musashi when it, oh, okay, and they uh, they say they first they cut out her heart, Sakura's heart, carry it around, and then they burn it in a little bowl. But then she's like, "I'm sticking around here. I'm not. I'm not coming with you." I believe Musashi is the Hector equivalent. This guy here, and I think Tanaka was the Shogun villain. And maybe oh. if I have it backwards, then I, I, I was. I thought this was Tanaka, but I, it's easy to get the, that confused. It's. It's. Um, I mean, for all I know, this might be Teddy. Um, <laughs> yeah. So. Anyway, but the point of this is that she doesn't go with her, uh, but uh, the shit, there was a, a bigger point than that. Um, fuck, yeah, it's gone. I don't know. What well, they basically is. say that if you're not willing to fight for your own land, for your own country, then you're a coward. Oh, yes, that's true. That's what they said. But I was going to say, this can't be the end of the Shogun world. they got to come oh, back. No, no, we no. have to see some of these characters again. Otherwise, it's the dumbest diversion. They just wandered into this park, had a big weird fight that killed most of the people. This lady burned her friend's heart, and then they'd leave them. They're going to be back. We'll see yeah. them in the later episode. This is not a pointless detour. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Good summary. So then we all, speaking of pointless detours, Ed Harris has a little reuni re reunion with his daughter. First, he's skeptical that she's actually a real person. He thinks that she's just another Ford trick, which he says is a pretty dirty trick. But they have a little bit of a conversation about uh, what they're up to and why their uh, relationship is, is all uh, fucked up and stuff. And then they have a swig of whiskey by a fire. And they agree, he agrees to leave with her at sunup. What's her name? Her name is uh, Claire or Emily. Emily, very good. Is Claire even a word? No, Claire's no. not a word. Well, who, I've never heard think? the word Isn't Claire in another, my life. She has two names. Well, okay, yeah, Claire was her pseudonym. Oh, okay. Was a fake so one, I was but her fucking, real name is Emily. I was, I was 200% correct. I think, I, I, don't, I don't know, but if her pseudonym was Claire, I won't dispute All that. All right, so Clanemy wakes up in the morning. Uh, <laughs> but really what it was is that she basically forgives her father for all the transgressions of him being absent and being sort of like the guy who's obsessed with the fake world She's, inside of Westworld. She starts and, to forgive. Well, yes, but she says that we can reconcile this if you make amends by mm -hmm. starting with leaving with me, coming with me to the beach, getting out of here, because I am not going to allow you to go out in a blaze of glory in your own terms inside a, a real park of killer robots yeah. so he kind of chuckles himself and says okay that'll be great it, I at that moment I felt like he had found his redemption and then by the next scene it realizes she wakes up and he's gone yep. and it turns out that's not at all what he wanted he wanted the blaze of glory he I tricked suppose. her yeah. yeah so he, he snuck off under the uh, cover of night and uh, she calls him a motherfucker which is exactly what he is well, to that's her, a, he is. Yeah, she, he, she, that's a perfect description for everybody's father. All right, uh, as we all know. 
um, so that's why I always send my dad a Father's Day card. I yeah. say, Happy Motherfucker's Day. Yes. Um, and then uh, Dorothy gets separated from the Tin Man. Yes. And <laughs> Bernard, Bernard is cosplaying as Tin Man here. So this is a thing they introduced the, called the Cradle, which well, I don't know. The Cradle's recall. always been around. The Cradle's been like the heart, the, not the heart, I'd say the brain center, or the, the CPU of the entire park. You've heard of it before? Yeah, they've referenced the Cradle many times. They have? Yeah, I've heard. I've definitely, oh. if they haven't referenced it, I've definitely seen it referenced on like Westworld, Mesa Diagram and stuff is, is not a new term at all okay all right well it's new to me because i have a horrible memory no, no, no. for this kind of shit but they basically say that something has been responding to a, attempts to affect the code for the past seven days and it's been outwardly actively blocking and they don't yeah. know what it is and bernard suddenly has this revelation he's like i remember coming to this room i remember coming to this place and it goes back to that scene where it looks like he's pulling this little chestnut out of, of a, out of a case but what it really is is a control unit and he says i brought something here or someone here yeah so the big speculation was that something or someone has to either be Ford himself or Arnold. And we don't know which one it is at this point, or if it's either one of them at this point, but Bernard is going to actually insert his own control unit into the cradle to go in like Neo going into the Matrix. Yes, this reminded me of uh, that movie with Michael Douglas. I'll, I'll talk about more in the bigger one, if I remember. Um, all right, because I can't think of it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so, all right, so that big moment here. This is Maeve's driving force. She does arrive. They, they get out of Shogun. They pop up out of a grave, and then they're like, oh, where do we go? And there's like, oh, it's not too far away. Okay, we'll go there. I gotta go alone. She goes alone alone she finds her daughter she has this little moment she talks about these dolls one of them is uh, named anna anna and her mommy and her oh, and she starts going on this thing go your mommy was she's strong don't worry your mommy will never leave and then all of a sudden guess what new mommy she's got she's got a replacement mommy <laughs> so this is kind of a big deal i thought as Maeve sort of looked, looked pretty despondent but what is this i mean what does she expect is going on here this girl's just she's a host so she's not gonna yeah. age so what 25 years this little girl's just waiting for her to come back the park people wouldn't have replaced her narrative or with yeah. new characters. It was surprisingly short-sighted for someone who's supposed to be as intelligent as Maeve. Well, that's, I, I didn't think she like because I even asked you while we were watching. I was like, where do you think? I assumed the daughter would be like I was joking, like like plugged in like a Roomba or something mm -hmm. in some she in was some docked. office. <laughs> yeah, docked or like in or some. Or she was just like trying to dock unsuccessfully forever <laughs> just, in a corner, or just like a video game NPC that's lost its path that's just bumping into a cave. Uh, <laughs> can't bump into something that's the uh, yeah. cave is an inverted hole it's okay anyway um but what she should have done on this next picture is basically just take one? that basket put it over her head and then take the daughter <laughs> it's, 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 it's a skyrim or it's, it's a skyrim trick yeah. uh, i agree but uh almost immediately though the bad guys sh well maybe not calling bad guys not fair but everybody's scared of them the ghost nation shows well, up i mean in this particular narrative i think it's safe to call them the bad guys because right. they come in and murder and steal yeah. and scalp and do horrible things yes but this activates uh armistice and hector and they start having a little gunfight arrow fight um oh the one woman did come back with them to them for shogun the armistice is equivalent came back dragon right. dragon face yeah so face. um they're uh they have a fight these guys chase one of them chases down in fact that's i think i want to say that although they all it's one of the guys with the top half uh he, he comes uh up to uh mave mave thank you speaking hey. lakota so they, and they have a Lakota exchange right. and saying, like, our paths are the same. They go to the same place. And Maeve's like, your path goes to hell. And so we don't know what happened. With right, that. but it shows that their motivations have definitely changed. That They are not on the same path that they were back when they were fulfilling the role of their narrative in yeah. this particular homestead situation. Right. So, so th they're completely different. But exactly what's governing the uh, ghost nation is still a kind of a mystery, right? And it's... it's is very interesting to note that they seem at this point to be on the side of humans, to be protecting humans, and yet you would think that because of that, their prime directive would be to shut down and kill anyone like Maeve, and yet they showed hesitation in and reasoning abilities with Maeve. Yes, that's a good, yeah. yeah. So this so, was kind of a reversal as well. We don't truly know what their point is. A reversal or an introduction of nuance. Yes, mm -hmm. that we don't right. yet understand exactly. fully. Right. I got a B plus in college. Mm. Uh, all right, so then there's a whole other storyline here involving Teddy and uh, Angela and uh, Dolores and Phil. They're captive. Mm -hmm. There's actually have, they have two captives. Ted, now, now Teddy has been uh, 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 gotten gotten a, he has had his upgraded. free will ripped away from him and been changed on a personality basis by Dolores. Well, we weren't sure what she did to him as far as what changes she made, but it. She made him aggressive and... Uh, and he's cognizant of these changes. Yes. He talks about... Yeah, yeah. It's an interesting... He's, he, his whole personality is very different. He, he, he sort of takes initiative, but not in a great way. He's kind of a loose cannon now. And yeah. Yeah. So um, you, you should always be a tight cannon. That's mm -hmm. the ideal cannon. Yeah. 
But anyway, they're doing this thing with this train that we knew Dolores wanted to prepare the train, and they unhook the rest of the cards. Uncouple. Uncouple. Oh, thank mm-hmm. you. And uh, we're not sure. I mean, I think this is filled with bombs and stuff. Isn't that the nitro nitros or not? I don't know. Yeah, I or think they're just that... going to crash it into yeah. a thing. But what are they? What's the plan here? Um, I don't know. We'll see where it ends up. Although it does look like the railroad just dies right there. But I was saying, like, this is how the park visitors come in. So there must be some sort of area where they get on the train like another train stop or it might not be but extension of the tracks but there's got to be cars and roads that come up to wherever it's headed in the most recent time span that we see in the show when the original guys get to the guys being the uh, floki and bernard yeah get to the tunnel there's smoke billowing out of the tunnel yes that leads to the mesa yeah so i'm wondering if those two events connect in some way that maybe she crashes the train into that that could be just be blocking the tunnel might be that simple yeah i I don't know others from coming in or could be two could be two entirely unrelated events too yeah and also it's it's the most accurate metaphor for um intercourse okay big reveal at the end dr ford is in the mariposa uh county um hooker 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 saloon. Hooker, hooker saloon. Yeah. Brothel. Thank you. So uh, it turns out that the control brothel. unit that Clementine dragged, the, and, and basically the control unit that was in the secret lab that Clementine dragged Bernard to, that Elsie was tied up outside of, was indeed the mind of Ford. Okay. And that Bernard was sent there to retrieve it and to drop it off at the cradle to upload it into the cradle so that Ford, in his infinite. A bill, a desire to maintain and control can a still assert control from beyond death. Oh, all right. Control was always his big thing, and before he died at the end of season one, he said something like, great men or great composers never die, they simply become music. Mm-hmm. And then we see him sitting in the saloon playing the piano, because as soon as they walked in, the, we got a brief flash of a piano, I was like, holy crap, it looks like Ford sitting at the piano. Yeah, because Teddy walks in and looks right. around. Yeah. And correct me if I'm wrong about this, and if I'm wrong about it here, I'll also be wrong about it in a long version, because we do it back to back, so yeah. I can be double wrong. Yeah, that's But that good. dog that comes through, that runs in, I thought that looked a lot like, it reminded me of the dog that young Robert yeah. Ford had. I I think it was. That was the same dog. Yeah. So it was kind of a foreshadowing event that what was the person that was inside the saloon was actually Ford, and it turned out to be, and he sat down right next to him. Yeah, that dog was not an accident. They weren't no. they weren't like, oh shit, we have no wolf. Well hopefully they don't notice that we have a totally different animal. Yeah, and I wasn't uh, expecting to see Anthony Hopkins again in this whole series. So I was pleasantly surprised. And the whole fact that it was him, but it was a reflection of him was kind of another homage to the whole reflection. And that he's playing music because he became. Yeah. Yes, I, I wasn't too shocked that we saw him again. I mean, it, it's this shit. This job's got to pay well. I mean, well, how I mean, hard is it to show up and act for four days? Come right, on. but I mean, doing the <laughs> show like this has got to take a toll on you. And yes, is is he was very limited appearance, so it probably yeah. didn't take too much of a toll on him. Yeah. But he is kind of getting up there. Uh, dude, would you like me to help mount the lights on the on the top? Like, no, he does. He sits in a in a comfortable chair until then. I'm, I'm joking around. It's obviously you know uh, he deserves to be coddled. Like mm. like, like uh, why am I talking about this? All right, so that's the final reveal. So we will find out more in the remaining three, seven, eight, nine, mm-hmm. four episodes. Is it ten? I think it's a ten episode. I say it every week. I don't want to know. I don't know. <laughs> um, so we'll probably see him more. We'll, as to how much, we don't know. Maybe it'll just be like a quick little thing, or maybe he's like a Haley Joel Osment's body with Anthony Hopkins's face. Art AI, artificial intelligence. Okay. That movie's aged a little bit, by the way. I watched the beginning of it the other day. And it, okay. Um, all right. Jude so, Law has grown more hair since then. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He, uh, have you? Did you like it? So did, were, did, give me your reaction, review, response. No, we started off with that. I did like it much better than last week. Yeah. Well, expand now that we've talked. Um, it's. I pretty much. I, it was. It, it was more meat to it this week. We have ma- a major revelation at the front. We had a major revelation at the very end. It didn't feel like it was all filler and fluff. It was much more enjoyable. All right. Perfect. <laughs> I had a good time watching it. I I did I do agree that it was a step up from last week. Although I wasn't as disappointed by last week's as you were, um, but I am interested to find out more about this cradle thing because I'm curious because uh, they took it out of Bernard and put it in another one, which is that. That's how I read that. What happened? Did they what? Mm-hmm. They took a soul ball out of Bernard's head and it dropped it off in another Pepsi can in the cradle. Well, they, they, they took his control unit out and uploaded it directly via direct input into the cradle. Oh, that's how that works. Yeah, all right. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm curious to see how that all plays out. I don't know. That was the most interesting part of this episode for me as far, you know, but there was a lot of cool stuff. 
we'll find out more later and um thanks for listening everybody hit that uh, like button or whatever don't i don't care i mean i care because i ask but you know yeah i'm not i don't care if you don't but uh and twitter and facebook and all the other shit that's uh clickable so lots of clicking to do everybody <laughs> go yeah. for it you know what just scared me a lot what you move the record button down to the bottom right i like, know oh no it's not recording <laughs> yeah the little indicator that tells the screens yeah i i know my computer had a fuck big huge because windows is a horrible company i've just spent three days repairing my machine just because it updated and actually it. microsoft is the company whatever it's, they don't <laughs> even deserve to be called by their the they who shall not be named microsoft de mort mm -hmm. um all right that's anyway i'll probably bitch about that in the next one so yeah find the long one everybody and thank you for listening thank you for watching we appreciate it we love you love you too james hey. you want to no. end this with a kiss no fuck Thank you.